Good day, class. In the past lectures, we learned the concept of a derivative, as well as the derivatives of algebraic, circular, logarithmic, and exponential functions. We also learned how to differentiate combinations of such functions by using the constant multiple rule, sum rule, product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. Now in this lecture, we will have two main topics. The first will be a differentiation technique when we have a lot of products, quotients, and powers. The second topic deals with the derivative of other classes of functions. In particular, in this video, we will learn the topic logarithmic differentiation. Now without further ado, let us begin. Now logarithmic differentiation is a technique used in differentiating complicated products, quotients, and powers. Unlike the normal differentiation technique that we normally apply, logarithmic differentiation is a long method involving three main steps. The first step involves the absolute value. It takes note that the absolute value has a relationship between products, quotients, and powers, namely, it distributes over these operations. In particular, that we have that the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. The absolute value of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the absolute values. And the absolute value of a power is the power of the absolute value. Now, as for the second step in logarithmic differentiation, we have, by the name, the logarithm. Now, unlike the, the absolute value, the logarithm, though it has a relationship between products, quotients, and powers, does not distribute over these operations, but rather transform them. That is, the logarithm of a product is not the product of the logarithms, but becomes the sum of logarithms. The, quotient, the logarithm of a quotient is just the difference of the logarithms and the logarithm of an exponent is just the exponent times the logarithm. We will see that there is a very big difference with how the properties were applied. However, both of this, these two operators, the absolute value and the logarithm, has a relationship with products, quotients, and powers. Now let's have an example on how this method works. Let's take for example y equal to the cube root of x plus 1 over cosecant to the 5x times the square root of 1 minus x squared. It is good to note that this expression has a lot of products, quotients, and powers. Namely, I have a product in the denominator, a very big quotient here, as well as powers for x plus 1 cosecant x and 1 minus x squared. This is a good indicator that applying logarithmic differentiation in finding the derivative of this quantity will be very fruitful. Let's first have the first step, which is to take the absolute value of both sides. And that is, we take the absolute value truly of both sides. However, as writing four line segments can be even done by your very very young niece or nephew, the more important application of step 1 is to use the properties of the absolute value. And that is to remember, the absolute value distributes. Now the goal for this step is to be able to express your quantity as a product, quotient, and powers of quantities inside your original expression. For example, of course the absolute value of y will still be absolute value of y. However, I can distribute the absolute value over the numerator and I have the absolute value of the cube root of x plus 1. But better, I will write that as the absolute value of x plus 1 to the 1 third. Notice that I can truly just write absolute value of the cube root of x plus 1. However, we want to use the properties of the absolute value and fully apply them so that we will have this form which is just the absolute value of the base to some exponent. 
it is good to know that I need this exponent later on. For example, I can also distribute the absolute value over the denominator and instead of writing the absolute value of this product, I can again distribute it and I can write the next term as the absolute value of cosecant x to the fifth. Last but not least, because of the presence of the square root, I can write this down as the absolute value of 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. In this step, it is important to be able to use as much as we can all the properties of the absolute value that was indicated in the previous slide, thus writing it down as some products and quotients of powers of quantities. Of course, we also do not overuse our properties. For example, I should know when to stop in x absolute value of x plus 1 as I cannot distribute the absolute value over sums and differences. So I will only stop to, to distribute the absolute value over the products, quotients, and powers. And that is for step 1. So from our first expression, I now have the absolute value applied uh, the properties to my right hand side. Now for the second step, it is about taking the lo natural logarithm of both sides. Very similar to the absolute value, you do, not, you do not just write ln to both sides of the expression. The important part here is to write or apply the properties of the logarithm. Now always remember what I have said before, as the absolute value distributes, the ln transforms. So what the ln will do with this products, quotients, and powers will be tra tra to transform it to sums, differences, and multiples. For example, the ln of a quotient, which is what we have right now, becomes the difference of two lns, the ln of the numerator over ln of the denominator. Applying it over and over again, I will have the following. I'll have the ln absolute value of y. By applying the ln on the right hand side, I will notice a pattern. And that pattern is like this. The first one will be the ln of the numerator. So, and then I will subtract it with the ln of the denominator. Now the denominator has two parts, the cosecant and the one minus x squared. But by distributing the sign properly, I'll be able to write it as follows minus ln cosecant x to the fifth, and then minus ln absolute value of 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. You will see here that it depends on whether you're in the numerator and denominator, whether you will have a positive ln or a negative ln. For example, for the term x plus 1 to the 1 third, since it's in the numerator, I will have a positive ln. While for cosecant and 1 minus x squared, they both have negative lns. Now this is just one application of the properties of the logarithm. We have another property and that is the exponential one. Namely, I can bring down the exponents, for example, the one third, the five, and the one half to give me this great expression. The main goal of the second step is to be able to write down your quantity or your expression into as follows, a plus minus, the exponent ln absolute value of some expression in your original quantity. You will see also how important it is that in the absolute value stage, I was able to isolate the exponents, as these exponents later on will go down in this second step. So if you forgot to, bring, to express these quantities as a base to some exponent, you will have a longer logarithmic differentiation especially when we go to our third step. Now the last step is to truly differentiate. This is a differentiation method and the first two steps is just a way to rewrite our quantity. Of course, we will still need to differentiate and I will do that by implicit differentiation. So for example, since I will need to differentiate both sides, I'll differentiate the left hand side. And I'll remember that the derivative of the ln absolute value of y will just be 1 over y times the derivative of y, which is just dy over dx. This also tells us the reason why we have step 1. 
Essentially, though I can straightforwardly apply step 2 because the main idea here is to remove the products, quotients, and powers to, becomes, to become sums and differences. However, the absolute value basically expands our domain. Remember, if I the derivative of the ln absolute value is exactly the same as the derivative of ln. And thus, since ln will only be defined for positive values, having an absolute value here means that not only can I take positive values of y, but I can also take negative values of y. In terms of the final derivative, you will have exactly the same derivative. However, in terms of process, it is important that you know that you take the absolute value of both sides to maximize the domain. Now, on the right-hand side, I will differentiate this by some rule. Again, it is important to see that instead of having a very long quotient rule and product rule and chain rule, I will differentiate this easily by as follows. The derivative of the first term will be constant multiple rule, one-third, times the derivative of ln absolute value of x plus 1, which is just 1 over x plus 1. Of course, I differentiate the argument x plus 1, which is just 1, and I will omit that here. For the second term, constant multiple rule, 5 will go out. The derivative of ln absolute value of cosecant x will just be 1 over cosecant x as follows. But unlike the first term, the derivative of cosecant x is not 1. It is negative cosecant x cotangent x. And thus, I will be writing it down uh, by chain rule. Last but not the least, I will have 1 half times the derivative of ln absolute value of 1 minus x squared. That's a 1 over 1 minus x squared. And by chain rule, you will have the derivative of 1 minus 2 x squared to be negative 2x. Now we are almost done as we still need to solve for dy over dx by implicit differentiation. And that is to multiply both sides by y. Now this is a good quantity and all. However, sometimes it is required for, for us to be able to write our derivative fully in terms of x. That is to be expected as you may remember when you differentiate for example this quantity here by quotient rule the final derivative is all in terms of x. The good thing here is that this y can be expressed in terms of x as y is equal to this quantity here, and by rewriting it down, I will find the full derivative that is dependent only on the variable x. You will see now that the logarithmic differentiation as a technique will involve three main steps. And for you to be able to master it, I will write it down on the left side of the screen. Now, the best thing to, the best way to master this technique is to practice and do a lot of method, I do a lot of examples so that you will do step 1, 2, and 3 as smooth as possible. Let's try to apply these steps on our next example. I want to find dy over dx if y is equal to the cube root of x squared times tangent to the fourth x over quantity 2x squared plus 1 cubed times the log of x. It is good to note that this quantity has a lot of products, quotients, and powers. Thus, applying logarithmic differentiation will be very worth it. So let's do our first step to take the absolute val value of both sides. Now, unlike what we did in the previous example, you do not need to write every step down. For example, before I take the absolute value of y and then I equate it to the absolute value of the right hand side. But remember, what is being asked for us is not to write two lines, but to apply it on the right hand side. So let us recall what is the expectations here. Number one, to distribute it over all products, quotients, and powers and not distribute it over sums and differences. Second is that I need to be able to isolate the base and the exponent if it has a base and an exponent as much as I can. For example, 
I have a lot of quantities here. The first part, cube root of x squared, has the, an exponent of 2 thirds. So instead of writing absolute value of this quantity, I'll write absolute value of x to the 2 thirds. I'll do the same for everything else. So for tangent, I'll have absolute value of tangent x. The exponent is to the 4. For the denominator, I'll have absolute value of 2x squared plus, q, plus 1 cubed. And for the last term, I'll have the absolute value of log x. Of course, if you do not have an exponent to begin with, then we do not need to write down the number 1. See here, I was able to express my quantity as of a base, absolute value of a base to some exponent, and I was able to distribute it over, sum, over products and quotients and powers, and I stopped when we had a sum here. That is for the first step. How about the next step? I'll take the ln of both sides, and the ln of the left-hand side will just be ln absolute value of y. Again, if the expectation for the first is to be able to express it as base to some exponent, for the second, it is to transform. Remember, as the absolute value distributes, the ln transforms. The transformation should be from products, quotients, and powers to sums, differences, and constant multiples. For example, in this problem, since that absolute value of x to the 2 thirds is in the numerator, I'll have a positive 2 thirds, which is the exponent ln of the base. Always remember, it will be a plus minus exponent ln of the base. For example, in here, this is in the numerator, so we have the x plus exponent, which is 4, ln of the absolute value of the base. This is, the next one will be in the denominator, so it will be a minus exponent ln of the base. And the last will be still in the denominator with an exponent of 1. So just negative ln of the base log x. Every term here will have an ln, and every one will also have an absolute value. Now we are ready to implicitly differentiate both sides. The derivative of the left-hand side will just be 1 over y times the derivative of y, dy over dx. For the second, for the right hand side, I will have constant multiple 2 thirds times the derivative of ln x, 1 over x, plus 4, derivative of ln absolute value of tangent x will be 1 over tangent x, times, of course, the derivative of tangent x, which is, that's right, secant squared x. Of course, we continue with minus 3. Derivative of ln absolute value of 2x squared plus 1, which is 1 over 2x squared plus 1, chain rule will give us still times 4x. And last but not the least will be the derivative of ln log x, which is 1 over log x times the derivative of the logarithm of x, since this is of base 10, 1 over x ln 10. I cap this off by multiplying both sides by y, and since y is already given in our example here, I'll just write them down to give me my final answer. You will see that we can somewhat shorthand the solution when we apply logarithmic differentiation. However, even by doing so, the solution will be much longer than what we previously have. As the techniques that we have before have this feel that when you want to get a derivative, you can easily write them down. But for logarithmic differentiation, you have two preliminary steps, the absolute value and the logarithm stage. So one of the biggest downsides of this method is that instead of having a straightforward method, you will have a longer method where you will need to do a lot more other steps. So if you have a simple quotient or a simple product, it is not that recommended to use logarithmic differentiation and just use plain product rule and quotient rule. However, if you have a very complicated quantity as we have here in our example, sometimes the very long logarithmic differentiation becomes a little bit worth it. So it is also part of our studies to know when 
and when not to use logarithmic differentiation as we don't need to always apply it because honestly you can still use quotient rule product rule and chain rule to get the same derivative but one of the nice things about logarithmic differentiation is that instead of having a very long quantity if you can see for the derivative that we have right now it is somewhat elegant as you have a product and then you have this easy to quantify sum and that it is, that is it it is for logarithmic differentiation now in the next videos we are going to be talking about the derivatives of other classes of functions now i hope you learned well in this video stay safe and thank you for watching